Hello everyone, I hope you're all doing well. Welcome to today's Applied Mechanics. Today's one will be quite short. I will be showing you guys how to apply your sign rule. It's not specifically Applied Mechanics, but it helps you kind of find your way around calculating certain unknown variables. It works best when you're calculating your resultant, your equilibrium, especially in terms of your vectors. So, our sign rule um, normally works when you have at least two known lengths or variables and at least one known angle. That way you're able to essentially have one unknown in order to calculate and get what it is that you're trying to calculate. So there's two main methods that we're going to use to calculate the sine rule. Method number one, we are calculating an unknown angle. Method number two, we'll be calculating an unknown length. So let's get into method one. I've already done this because I thought it's, it's a recording, but yeah, it turns out technology did a number on me, right? So we are going to consider this diagram on screen here. So as you can see, we have sides A, B, and C. Well, corners or angles A, B, and C. And then we have lengths or sides A, B, and C as well. So the rule of thumb is how you label a specific length or, um, or how you label a specific part. It has to match completely as the angle that is across it. So you'd obviously start with a triangle that's maybe A, B, C. And how you continue to label the other side, just label B across B, C across C, A across A. Okay. Then the given sides or the known variables on here are the length of A, which is 5 meters, and the length of C, which is 6 meters. Then the length of B is unknown. We have the angle C, which is known at 30 degrees. Then we have angle A, which is X. It's an unknown variable. Then uh, angle B is also an unknown variable. So from here, we know the length of A, length of C. So it already suggests that from our formulas for our sine rule, these are the formulas that we use. A over sine A is equal to B over sine B is equal to C over sine C. But you'd only need to use two at a time, so you don't need to worry about that many variables. So from what we found on here, from what we have that is known, we have the length of A, we have um, the angle of A, which is X, we don't know the variable. We have the length of C, and we have the angle of C, which is 30. So it's already um, suggesting, or it's already a good indicator that we're going to use A over sine A, as well as our C over sine C. Then we're going to plug and play our formula on there. The length of A was 5. The angle at corner A was X, so we'll say 5 over sine X. Then the length of C was 6. And the angle corresponding angle at the corner was 30. So we um, substituted as a sine 30. Then we cross multiplied. Then it led us to 6 sine x over, or oh, 6 sine x. Then on the other side, it gave us a 5 sine 30, right? Then essentially, we're trying to get to a point where we have our x as a subject of the formula. Then we divided both sides by 6. Then we ended up with sine x on one side. And on here, I just solved for this variable on here. I just plugged it into the calculator to simplify it. Then from that point on, you need to essentially get your sign to the other side. And remember how you get your sign to the other side on your calculator. You're not just going to say sine of 0.417. It'll give you a wrong answer. So you're going to say shift sign then 0 0.417, then essentially it gives you the answer that you're looking for. So X, which was the angle at corner A, is essentially 24.624. And that is essentially method A, how you could use it to calculate an unknown angle. Then since we had a triangle set up, we had the value of C, we just calculate the value of A. If you needed to calculate the value of B, that would be very easy because you know that the sum of the angles of a triangle need to equal to 180. So you can just say 180 minus this and that, and it essentially gives you what you are looking for on there. All right, so we had the 30, then we had the 24.624 plus theta equals to 180. Then that gives you 54.624 plus theta is equals to 180. Then 180 minus 54.624, it essentially gives you 125.376. Okay, that is method A. I hope it makes sense. If it doesn't, feel free to let me know. Method number B is when we are essentially given all the included angles and we're given um, a known length, one known length, and we're essentially trying to calculate an unknown length. All right, so you'd see that we have ABC, then we have the length of C as 5 meters, the length of B is not given, the length of A is given as X, which is the variable that we are trying to solve for on there. So already, 
this suggests to you that we need to use the a over sine a and the other unknown we have would be our c over sine c okay so our a again is the x variable we're trying to solve over sine a which is sine 40 then our c the length was 5 then the included angle was 30 degrees then you cross multiply it led us to an x sine 30 is equal to 5 sine 40 then we divided both sides by sine of 30 and essentially it gave us a value of x is equals to 6.428 and that is the included length that we're trying to solve for on there and there you have it the two methods we use while calculating the sine rule to calculate unknown variables if you have any question at any point you know what to do adios